My name is David Chemington. I'm glad to be the teaching pastor this morning and work with you on the theme of joy. Joy. Um, do you remember this? How, how many grew up with this little song in their heart? I've got the joy, 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 joy. You, can we do this? Can, Carrie Beth, can we do this? Yeah. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. We had loaded up our son to go move from, uh, he's moving from Fairborn to Lebanon, and so I had a truckload of uh, garage junk in our car. And uh, we started heading towards Lebanon and got a call from Roxy. I was in another car, and she said, I don't think I got any brakes. Fortunately, she, was, she had just started out on the journey, and sure enough, we were kicking uh, brake fluid out of our truck, and uh, so we were able to come back. We, uh, Friday, I had gone up and down the interstate, um, probably put 100 miles on the interstate on Friday, and then yesterday we drove down the interstate to go to Fairborn. And so I'm, I, was, I, I was kind of upset, you know how you get when things don't go the way you want them to go and things had to be adjusted and all that. Uh, and about three minutes later, I began to think about all the different ways I'd been on the interstate and all the different traffic things that I had negotiated and how those brakes could have gone out in the interstate. And so I was just really thankful uh, that, uh, first of all, Roxy was driving, so if anything happened, you know. And <laughs> no, that's not true at all. By the way, I did get breakfast this morning, for those of you who are interested. <laughs> it's a long story that only those who came last week understand. But, uh, but by the way, let's go over this again, just, just in case. Okay, you ready? What did the green grape say to the blue grape? Br okay. Let me explain, because there are still people who don't get It's a joke. Okay. If you hold your breath, you turn. Yeah, it wasn't breathing. They got it now. Okay. Roxy, did you get it? Yeah. It's still not working. <laughs> we, got a, we got a family circus, uh, circle, circus video. Uh, you got one of those, Jackson? I don't, pick one. <laughs> you, you, you notice what happens at this crowd? We practice time-released humor. <laughs> uh, it it kind of works its way back, and people get things. Okay. Anyways, if you, if you pay attention to uh, how we read that and what Nyla was saying, the, the verse... The verse that Jesus is sharing with us, that he wants his joy to be complete in us, comes in the midst of his sharing what it means to abide in him. Abide in me. And, and, and then he says, and then my joy will be complete in you. Abide in me, and my joy will be complete in you. You know, Paul says that one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Joy. Do, do, you, do you have joy this morning? Was that, was that what you woke up with? Would you, did you wake up and go, I'm a Christian and I've got the joy deep down in my heart? And were you able to approach life with some laughter and, and some excitement? 
let's, let's just make sure that this isn't odd. Let's turn in your Bibles. Would you turn in your Bibles to the 17th chapter of John? The 17th chapter of John. I just want to grab one more verse. This is a prayer of Jesus, the 17th chapter of John. That's page 830 for those of you who are using a few Bible. 1713. This is Jesus praying, and he's speaking to God, and he says, And now I am coming to you, coming to the Father, I have told them many things, talking about the, the disciples and the apostles, while I was with them, so they would be filled with my joy. I'm afraid that Christianity and Christians as a whole have been considered joy killers. Let's, let's, let's just think through history of all the things that we've been against. We've, we've been against drinking and gambling, and um, we've been against sex. Not, not necessarily uh, for procreation, but to have fun. We, we, just, we weren't allowed to have fun, okay? So just helping you out there. Um, we've been against musical instruments. We, we, let me get my list here. We've, we've been against the movies. We've been against TV. We've been against secular music. We, we've been against cards. We've been against dancing. We've been against sex. Oh, did I say that already? <laughs> I was with a lady the other day. Um, uh, she was checking me out, and one of the coworkers was leaving, and, and uh, she said, uh, as, as a, uh, saying goodbye, be good. And the checkout girl goes, well, what fun is that? And I go, that's a biblical illustration right there. Because in, in our minds, we, we think in terms of if you're going to be good, you're not going to have any. There you go. And, and, and why is that? That's because we, the Christians, who have tried to be good, have given an impl implication that if you're going to have fun, you can't be good. We've been the joy killers of life. And yet, here Jesus is calling us to have joy. And Paul telling us that the Holy Spirit's gift to us is joy. And how fun life could be if we are complete in Christ Jesus. I was at Tar Hollow this year, and one of our, uh, one of our co-workers uh, said, what do, I say to, what do I say to one of these kids who say to me, well, how fair is it if, you know, I'm a Christian and then somebody at the last minute decides they want to be a Christian just before they die and they accept Jesus and they get to go to heaven too. And I said, do you understand the implication of that question? And she said, what's the implication? And I said, what he's saying is that if I follow Jesus now, I'm not going to have any fun. And that this guy who's going to have all the fun is going to wait to the last second and he's going to give his heart to Jesus and he's going to get to go to heaven and I get to go to heaven, but I didn't have any fun while I was living. Why is that? Because we give the, we give the impression that as Christians, we, we shouldn't have fun. We're not allowed to have fun. You want to show another cartoon, Jackson? It, and, and so what we do is we give that impression that being good is not going to be fun. I'm going to do that all sermon, so just hang on. And, 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 here, and, and, sadly, and sadly, we live into that. What, what I mean by that is, sadly, we give the impression that being stern... Mm -hmm. And being against things and being angry is, is what being a Christian is all about. I remember as a child, um, we were camping in Michigan, and uh, the group of kids that were all around camping together, uh, you know how this works, 
uh, one kid splashed another kid with some water, and then that kid had to throw a glass of water, and the next thing, the whole camp is, is, is erupting as garbage cans and everything else is coming out to throw water on one another. And it's just, it's just a total free-for-all at this campgrounds for a few minutes. Well, it happened to be Sunday that that, uh, that broke out, and uh, across the street from our campgrounds was this family who obviously had just gone to church. And my dad walked across the street because they had two people that were about my age. And, and, and he said to them, I'm surprised your boys didn't get into that. And which the father said, oh, they better not have. It's Sunday. The implication being, if it's Sunday, you can't have any fun. How many grew up with some of that? Did anybody here grow up with some of that? Yeah, if it's Sunday, you shouldn't have fun. If you're Christian, you shouldn't have fun. Christianity has a rich history of humor. Wit, good cheer, joy, and celebration going back all the way to its beginnings. Most of the Christian fathers found things to be funny. In Bethany, in, the, in Israel... In Bethany, the, the home of Lazarus, if you go visit Lazarus' home, the, the, the word for at Lazarus' home means house of laughter. The, that, what, what the rumor is that after Lazarus was raised from the dead, he couldn't stop laughing. In Nigeria, the name of God is translated father of laughter. I'm a big fan of Jerry Clower. He was uh, an award-winning comedian in country and, and Western music. And uh, he, he, he wrote this. I'm convinced there's only one place where there is no laughter, and that is hell. The writer of the Proverbs writes, A cheerful heart is a good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. We now know by studies that laughter itself is good medicine, don't we? Now, Nyla, Nyla said this while she read the Scripture. This, this comment of Jesus in John 15 is, is placed in context of the Last Supper. That these are comments that Jesus makes, the, the very last kind of comments that Jesus makes before he's going to the cross. Now, I, I want you to understand the implications of that. Jesus has in his heart the cross of Calvary. He's carrying the burden of the cross of Calvary. He's carrying the burden of his people. And what he says to them is, abide in me and you will have Joy. Even in the, in the midst of the stress and strain of the cross of Calvary, Jesus is able to talk about having joy. And what he wants for his people more than anything else at that point is that they will be filled with him so that his joy might be in them and that their joy will be complete. Isn't that striking? There's a psalm, it's the, from the second psalm, that says that God laughs. There's another passage of Scripture that says that God sings over us. When, when, you, when your image of God, when, when you pray with God, when you sit with God, when you abide with God, you see him laughing. You see him smiling. You see him celebrating life. You, you see him wanting you to have life in its abundance because the image that you have with, with God is significant when it comes to your abiding in God. Isn't it true? 
I had to be well into my ministry, well into my ministry, before I saw a picture that was titled The Laughing Jesus. And I thought, how amazing is that? Because as a kid, I never grew up ever thinking of Jesus laughing. And yet, when we think about it, we think about Jesus being at parties, turning water into wine. We think of Jesus eating and, and, and spending time with sinners and tax collectors. Who wants to eat with a grumpy? And, and he says, let the children come to me. How many grumpy, nasty people do you think gather children around them? If you start thinking about it, you have to think Jesus was a fun kind of guy. He, he brought people near him and around him, and children wanted to be with him, and people wanted to be with him. I think he was a great joke teller. And if you think in terms of Jesus being funny, watch then what he teaches, because every once in a while, in my world at least, it's hilarious. Hilarious. You got another one, Jackson? Now, right now, right now, your heart may not be joyful. And I appreciate that. But Jesus has said to us, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I, I want us to capture what Jesus has promised us. That with his death upon the cross of Calvary, he not only has forgiven our sins, but he has conquered death. And, and we have this gift of eternal life. We have this hope of his presence within us. And with God, anything is possible, isn't it? And, and we have this, this, great, this great gift that no matter what I'm experiencing... Behind it all can be the joy of knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now, how do I get there? What did they tell us? Abide in me. Abide in me. Abide in me and my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. Now, let me invite you to take that seriously. And let me invite you who are struggling with joy right now to overcome that with nothing more than abiding in Christ. For the more we abide in Christ, the more what is in Christ lives in us, and the more that what lives in us in Christ enables us to experience the joy of the Lord. So let's think for just a second what, what it would look like to abide in Christ. First of all, there needs to be a want to. Don't you agree? I say that because some of us are stuck and grumpy, and we like it. It's working for us. Right? I mean, I'm angry, I'm upset, life hasn't gone the way I want it to, things haven't turned out the way I want them to, and therefore I feel like I have a right to be grumpy, I have a right to be, you know, kind of uh, this kind of disposition, and it's working for me, and I'm just going to stay here. Just saying that the joy of the Lord begins with a want to. And I understand that at this moment, there could be some very deep, deep things going on in your world that are hard to laugh at. But I remember when, when my family were 
going in a car uh, up to Deschler, Ohio for the funeral of my father. And we started telling grandpa stories. And it was funny. It was a joy. It was full of laughter. It was one of those moments where I'm going, I'm not sure if we're going to a funeral or a comedy store. What is going on in here? But we knew at a deep level that dad was fine and that he was living eternally. And we knew what Christ Jesus had brought to our lives because of dad's faith in Christ Jesus. There was not a great reason to be sad And so we laughed at it. I understand that maybe at this moment it's hard. But if you want to, if you want to, Jesus has offered his joy. It takes time, doesn't it, to abide in Christ? It takes time. It takes time to slow down. It it takes time to stop. It takes time. What kind of time are you giving to Christ to abide in? Have you been able to stop? For example, today, this is Sunday. How much time will you give to abiding in Christ on this Sunday? Remember how we say It's a Sabbath, and so if we're going to celebrate a Sabbath, four things ought to be involved in celebrating a Sabbath. We ought to be able to stop. We ought to be able to rest. We ought to be able to delight. We ought to be able to contemplate. That's what makes it a Sabbath. So will you today have a Sabbath? Or are you ready to rush out of here to do one more thing? be involved in one more thing, to go one more place. Come on, I know what we do for our vacations. We run ourselves ragged. We're, we're, we're working harder at vacation than we are at work, aren't we? It takes time to abide in Christ, to stop, and to pray. And here's what I know about broken hearts. They have to be honest with God. We can't fake fine with God. The more honest you are with God, the more revealing you are with God, the more that God can do with you and for you. How honest are you with God? Because there are days where I don't like God. Do you have those days? There are days when I think God failed me. Do you have those days? There are days in which I say to God, what are you thinking? Can you say that to God? Do you trust the God who laughs and sings over us to hear our deepest feelings and emotions and be okay? How do I abide in Christ that his joy might be in me? It takes time. It takes time. And you need to be patient with yourself. It is an instant. But there's got to be a want to. You've got to want to have the joy of the Lord. And it requires honest, heartfelt, communication with God. The joy of the Lord. I, I have a story of my mother. She, she's explaining to a group of ladies that my dad is having back problems. And because of his back trouble, he's just really restless. And he tosses and turns in bed, and he just makes it impossible to sleep with. And she's explaining it to these ladies. And then out of her mouth comes, you ought to sleep with him sometime. 
<laughs> Not your normal offer from the pastor's wife. In the midst of the most serious and heartfelt moments, Christians have an amazing gift of laughter, don't they? Because we can look life right in the eye and know that Christ has overcome it all. That I can have great cheer because what Jesus has done. And I know in my soul that even in the most difficult times, if I simply abide with Christ, Christ can make it all good. And I can have His joy in my heart and His joy in my heart will make my joy complete. You got one more, Jackson? <laughs> so two little boys were coming home from Sunday school and the teacher had just talked about Satan and the one little boy was a skeptic and he said what do you think? you think this stuff about Satan is real? and the kid goes I don't know and the skeptic boy goes you remember what happened about that Santa Claus right? he said I bet Satan turns out to be dad too <laughs> I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay and I'm so happy so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my heart and I'm so happy so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my heart we're going to open the table up and we're going to celebrate communion what kind of spirit do you wish to bring today a spirit of great confidence and joy in the Lord he invites you to come. Maybe you're not there this morning. Maybe life has really rocked you and it's a little more difficult. Come. Come and receive the grace of Christ. And during this communion, would you abide with Christ? Would you sit with him and experience his great grace? And know, know in your heart he has conquered it all. Have great cheer. We invite you to come. All, all who are here are welcome to come to the table. Reverend Eileen is going to lead us in our prayer of thanksgiving.